What's up, y'all? I was sitting here scrolling through Instagram and stumbled upon a conversation that <laughs> that almost got my hackles up. And then I was like, oh, right. We need to unpack this. And, I'm, and you know, one of the things that I realize happens, particularly right now in this moment where everyone is, everyone's on edge. Everyone, you know, if you live at the intersection of any kind of, um, uh, oppressed identity, any kind of marginalization, multiple part marginalizations, um, you're, you feel in a little tense. The world is looking a little, you know, <laughs> the world is looking a little, uh, precarious for many of us. And so it's an easy way for us to, again, end up in these polarities and these conversations that lack nuance, that lack, um, an intricacy and that without the intricacies, we lose so much and that we end up beefing with people that we actually are on the same side of, or at least share much of the same experience, sentiment and desires. Right. So I'm going to share this meme I just saw. And then this conversation I almost jumped into. Right. And then I was like, actually, nope, I'm going to jump into it on what's up y'all. So it says there's a privilege in saying you want to move to another country from the U S no, actually it's very anti-native to want to leave the native folks in the settler society. Y'all actively participated in there's privilege in abandoning lands that aren't yours. You're not allies. And I read it and I you know, I sat with it a second and I was like, it's missing something. <laughs> I felt that. Right. And I was like, let me. And so I went to go and talk about it. And then there was another comment on it from someone who I very much respect. And what I realized with, it, with that comment, and then there was a whole bunch of comments after that. And I was like, okay, people are turned up. And what I got to was right. Cause we're not having this conversation with any kind of nuance. Neither, like, we're in some real generalities that are a massive disservice to what's actually moving in this, right? So, here's the deal. I think we need to be specific about who this needs to be directed to. Um, like, if you are an anti-Trump person at the positionality of power, um, specifically, you are white, uh, and obviously, right, like for the most part, probably you are white and wealthy if you're like, I'm moving to another country, right? That requires a certain level of access and resource. So let's acknowledge there. There's probably some class privilege there and there's probably some racial privilege there, right? So if you are doing that and have not actively participated in dismantling the system your people made, yes, you are mad anti-native you are mad in your individualism you are mad in your whiteness <laughs> absolutely without question or concern um and i think that's important to be said uh and i think that's important not to lose sight of because for me the problem is that this conversation then makes this conversation between multiply marginalized people arguing about whether or not we're going to go down with the with the ship or jump in the water with the sharks. Like, uh, both these answers suck. And actually both answers lead us to the same place. Um, cause if the ship is going down, we're still going to end up in the water with the sharks. It might just take a little longer. Right. As opposed to being like, I'm going to try to take my chances and swim early. Right. And so what I want to offer is right. Like the, the importance of recognizing and having conversations that hold the nuance and complexity of things inside of them. And that when we fail to do that, we make enemies out of those who we are aligned with. We, we start to paint the world with a really broad stroked brush and then wonder why we are, you know, alone in our efforting, right? Um, and, and not building, building coalitions and collaboration and solidarity, right? So here's the deal. My people didn't ask to be here. I'm, I didn't, I didn't willfully, choicefully come to the United States. I was birthed here by the circumstance of enslavement. And since I've been here, the circumstances of enslavement 
and the circumstances of degradation and violence against black folks has not one moment stopped. And so I would be a fool to not explore all the possible options and opportunities available to me in service of no longer having to be harmed and killed on the daily. And that doesn't make me anti-native. That makes me pro Sonya's liberation. That makes me pro black people, right? And so I think it's really important, right, that, I mean, what I felt in that was I felt anti-blackness in that, right? I felt an erasure of the experiences of the black diaspora in the places where we have been brought to that have, that have only ever harmed us. And I think it also erases the experience of um, anti-blackness in, in, in indigenous and native communities. You know, my, my homie Jossie uh, Ross uh, on his podcast, Break, um, Break Dances with Wolves, does a, does a beautiful job and awfully talks about, as he lives at the intersection of indigeneity and blackness, um, you know, talks about that. And so, like, if people want to leave, uh, here's what I'm saying. If a marginalized person wants to get the fuck out of the United States, I think we're going to have to really hold the complexity of understanding why that might need to be. Um, And what I would hope that every person does, that all people do, right, is that we absolutely do our work here, right, to, to be in solidarity with returning the stewardship of Turtle Island back to indigenous folks. Like it's, it is not, uh, for me, it is not a deuces y'all. I'm out of here and you know, fuck what happens in this place. That is the, as a person who has left, that has never been the position in which I've operated. And it isn't the work that I do when I'm overseas. Um, And so what I think we're talking about is a certain level of privilege to just get up, escape, and then not be thinking about what's happening here. And the reality is that no person of marginalized identity has that luxury. So I know you can't be talking to those folks because none of them have that luxury. There's no place else we're going in the world where we're not still grappling with all the same dynamics that existed here prayerfully at a lower extent, at a less hyperbolic version, right? And so what I would hope we would all be in the strategy of is what what needs to happen to free up our energetic resource that we might best serve the liberation of all people? What needs to happen in my life to free up my energetic resource so that I might better serve the liberation of all people? And the truth of the matter is, for some of us, that will not be here on this landmass. For some of us, that will not be our best option. And then for some of us, there will not be a choice but to be here on this landmass. And then how do we be in collaboration, in solidarity, working toward um, dismantling the systems um, that impede our liberation? Yes, let's do that. But we can't do that with these, with these, you know, what I perceive, what feels to me is like these sort of like zinger memes, this Twitter culture, right? Where it's like, let me say this pithy thing that can be slapped on a meme that completely dilutes the nuance, the necessary nuance of a conversation and then makes it very difficult for us to see and hear and serve one another. So I'm really inviting us, really inviting us. To, we're going to have to learn how to be in complexity together. We're going to have to learn how to talk together um, about the different pieces and parts that make up the circumstances we find ourselves in and the solutions that we might be looking at to get out of it. We're going to have to be gracious with one another. Yeah. We're going to have to be gracious with one another. Those of us constantly under attack because what it does is it makes us then want to attack each other and then don't nobody get free that way. All right. Thanks y'all.